met someone who can help with my dreams. Hello and welcome to the class today. My name is Negidu Agada Godwin and we'll continue from our last lecture of spleen um, ultrasound. Today we're going to be discussing spleen pathology. But before we begin, I want you to join Sono Eyes Infos, the largest ultrasound only global professional group on social media platforms. For more information about our Pay classes, please send an email to sonoeyesdiagnostics at gmail.com or you can WhatsApp me at plus 234-8084-181383 or visit our online store at sonoeyes.business.site. Please like, share, subscribe and put on the notification to receive all our free lectures. You're welcome back. We'll begin with splenic abscess. There is um, the pyogenic abscess, macro abscess, which are caused by the hemat um, hematogenous spread from adjacent infections, such as subphrenic, pancreatic, or perinephric abscess, which forms like 75% of such abscess. They may be due to penetrating trauma or as a complication of uh, infection. Immunocompromised patients and patients with autoimmune disease like Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, uh, is also um, vulnerable to splenic abscess formation. The signs and symptoms yeah, you see patients uh, with uh, fever, chills, pains, tenderness, and leukocytosis. But sonographically, pyogenic splenic abscess have a wide range of appearances. There is the completely anechoic cystic abscess mass which, uh, with a see-through transmission. There is acoustic enhancement. There is a mixed lesion which will appear, hypo, which will appear as hypoechoic abscess. Um, abscess mass with different degree of uh, textural echo pattern may have echo-free areas, low-level internal echo or debris, flu debris level, and uh, you could also have um, septations. Mixed lesion abscess appears as hypoechoic mass with different degree of textural pattern. It may be echo-free, it could have echo-free areas, it could have low-level internal echoes or debris, you could have a flu debris level or and sometimes uh, septations. There is a markedly hyperechoic abscess mass with highly reflective gas bubbles associated with ring down artifacts, as you will see in our earlier lecture on artifacts, and or a dirty shadow that which will be indicative of abscess with gas uh, forming organisms. Micro abscesses develop more, uh, most often in spleen of immunocompromised patients, give or take 26% uh, of all splenic abscesses. Usually, it is an opportunistic infection in the patient with AIDS or um, leukemia. Common organisms associated with um, uh, micro abscess are uh, pneumocystis carinae, candidiasis, uh, or tuberculosis. The xenographical um, appearance, the spleen is filled with multiple tiny anechoic or hyperechoic lesions, which will be about 1 mm to 10 mm in size. Like you see in this um, picture, this is splenic abscess in a patient with Crohn's disease. This um, splenic abscess with gas forming organisms. You will see the hyperechoic foci with dirty, dirty uh, shadow. Now, the congestive splenomegaly will usually occur in 
CCF or RHF. CCF is congestive cardiac failure or right heart failure. Hepatic, hepatic um, cirrhosis and portal hypertension. The causes are passive congestion, hypercirculation, and intrinsic splenic factor like autoimmune processes. This is characterized by development of splenomegaly along the portosystemic shunts. However, a normal sized spleen does not rule out portal hypertension. This is an image of splenomegaly and tortuous tubular dilated splenorenal um, collateral veins in the region. And hemolytic anemia. Here you have the increased RBC destruction or uh, hemolysis and um, occurs under, it will occur under two circumstances. When there is an abnormality of the red blood cell, as in sickle cell anemia, thalassemia, or hereditary spherocytosis, or when a destructive process is at work, such as infection or autoimmune conditions. Fragile red cells are destroyed by spleen, which becomes enlarged. In sickle cell anemia, is uh, is the most uh, prevalent uh, condition in Black uh, Africans, Black American population. Progression of the disease leads to infarcts in various organs, which may include the spleen, which may eventually become shrunken and fibrosed. Patients with hemolytic anemia have non-obstructive hemolytic jaundice because. The, in, the cause of the increased destruction of RBC would release excessive amount of bilirubin into the blood. In hereditary spherocytosis, here it is actually a disorder of uh, surface layer membrane of the RBC. It leads to RBC that are shaped like spheres and premature breakdown of the RBC would lead to hemolytic anemia. This disorder is caused by a defective gene. The defective result, the defects will result in abnormal red blood cell membrane. The affected cells have similar surface, a surface area for volume than the normal um, red blood cell and can break down and can break open easily. Having a family history of spherocytosis uh, will increase the risk for the disorder. This is most common in people of North European uh, descent, where it has been found in all races. The signs and symptoms of um, anemia can vary from mild to severe. In severe cases, the disorder may be found in early childhood. In my cases, it may go on notice until adulthood. You also, there is jaundice, may have, um, infants may have jaundice and pale coloring. Splenom uh, splenomegaly, in most cases, the spleen is enlarged. Other symptoms may include fatigue, irritability, shortness of breath, and uh, weakness. Lab tests that can be that can help in diagnosis of this uh, condition will include uh, peripheral blood smear to show abnormal uh, shape of the the cells, bilirubin level, complete blood count to check for anemia, Combs test, osmotic fragility, reticulite count, um, reticulocyte count rather, LDH level. The complications in this uh, uh, condition, gallstone, much, um, we can have gallstone, much lower RBC production, that is a plastic crisis, caused by viral infection, which can make the anemia worse. So, graphically, what you will be seeing in anemia will be splenomegaly, which is almost always, and um, you also see gallstone. All right, let's look at splenic malignant disorder. 
First, primary malignancy, that is those originating in the spleen. As a major organ of the reticular endothelial system, the spleen is commonly affected by lymphoma and myeloproliferative disorder, particularly in myelofibrosis and leukemia. The malignancy may be infiltrative, which will be without any discrete focal mass. Miliary focal masses, it will have focal masses with numerous lesions, uh, less than 2 cm in diameter. Massive, so you have focal masses with widespread replacement of the parenchyma. Sonographically, the spleen is usually enlarged, but it's not always the case. Focal lesions are solid, hypoechoic, and homogeneous, ranging from small to large, often uh, confluent masses. They are heterogeneous, they will show heterogeneous necrotic lesions, which will be appearing anechoic. In lymphoma, this is the most common malignant disease affecting the spleen, which affects the lymphocytes. Malignant cells can infiltrate the spleen, lymph nodes, bone marrow, and thymus, and can also involve the liver, gastrointestinal tract, the kidney, and other organs. Splenic involvement may be found in up to 60% of lymphomas as a result of dissemination of the disease. Hence, a normal size spleen does not rule out the possible invasion of the spleen. There are two main groups, the uh, Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Signs and symptoms here is a patient may present with a range of non-specific symptoms, which include lymph nodes enlargement, uh, anemia, general fatigue, weight loss, fever, sweating, infection associated with decreased immunity. Prognosis depends upon the type of disease, which uh, must be determined and histologically uh, and it is staged with modern chemo agent, uh, which is almost uh, curable. Both ultrasound and CT may be used for the staging. Ultrasound demonstrates splenic involvement with greater sensitivity than the CT scan. And CT scan is superior in demonstrating the para um, paraaortic and iliac lymph nodes. Ultrasound appearance. Here, in many cases, the spleen is not enlarged. Lymphoma may, be, may produce diffuse splenic enlargement with normal hypo or hyperechogenicity. May produce focal lesion and they tend to be hypoechoic and may be single or multiple and of vary, varying sizes, micronodular or uh, macronodular. A differential diagnosis of leukemia Myelofibrosis or metastasis should be considered in the presence of multiple solid hypoechoic lesions, but most cases they are due to lymphoma. Right, so splenic infarction is relatively uh, common. It is the result of embolic or thrombotic obstruction of branches of the splenic artery in patients with various cardiovascular diseases like. Uh, bacteria endocarditis, um, endocarditis, my myocardial infarction, atherosclerosis, cardiac catheterization, um, hemolytic anemia, especially with sickle cell anemia, arteritis, pancreatic carcinoma, and myeloproliferative disease like leukemia, polycythemia vera, and so on. Sonographically. In acute infarction, fresh infarcts are well defined, hypoechoic, typically pyramidal or wedge shaped focal lesion. The apex of the wedge points to the hilum and the base towards the capsule. Color Doppler will delineate infarction from normal splenic parenchyma by the lack of flow, uh, flow signals. In chronic, 80% infarct heals without any complication. In healing phase, the echogenicity of the infarct increases and the size decreases or shrunken due to fibrosis or scarring. Calcification may appear. 
complications you have will be 20% of the patient may suffer from complications like increased liquefaction of the uh, infarct resulting in, in splenic abscess, development of subscapular hemorrhage or hematoma, splenic rupture, free interperitoneal fluid or hemi hemoperitoneum. Now, splenic trauma. The spleen is the most commonly injured organ in blunt abdominal trauma. A bleed may be subcapsular, intraparenchyma, pericapsular. Now, in subcapsular, liquid zone between, you will find liquid zones between the parenchyma and the capsule of the spleen. The bleed may be anechoic, isoechoic, or hyperechoic and may have a uh, crescent shape and conform to the contour of the spleen. In trapanchyma, the capsule remains intact, of course. There is destruction of the parenchyma and uh, you find hemorrhage. Sonographically, it can be recognized by heterogeneous parenchyma. Um, texture with anechoic, isoechoic, or hyperechoic lesion within the spleen. The pericapsular um, appearance, the uh, splenic capsule rupture with pericapsular bleeding. The blood commonly becomes ward off in the left upper quadrant. However, free inter intraperitoneal hemorrhage will spread into the peritoneal cavity, and thus there will be perihepatic fluid, and you or you can have fluid in the rectal vesical pouch or the pouch of Douglas. You will see. So the ultrasound grading system in splenic trauma. Grade one, you have the subcapsular hematoma. The thickness is less than three centimeter and or intraparenchymal lesion of less than three centimeter in diameter with intact capsule. Grade two, subcapsular hematoma, thickness greater or equal to um, three centimeter and you could have or intra uh, intraparenchymal lesion which is also greater or equal to three centimeters. In grade three, splenic fragmentation, you, you also see a vascular spleen or flow phenomenon in uh, liquefied intraperenchymal areas. So you can also have a watchful waiting, which you can which can be done in grade one, why surgery is necessary in grade three. Patients with grade 2 may, may need to undergo surgery in about 62% of the cases. So I want to thank you for joining this lecture today. Like I said, join our largest ultrasound only global international professional group on WhatsApp, on LinkedIn, on Facebook and on Telegram where we share real-time cases. And for more information about our pay classes, you can DM me or visit our website, sonoeyes.business.site and always leave me a follow. Until the next time I come your way again, keep learning not to sound. I wish I had a friend helping me grow in every way, saying yes. Money.